Today we're going to be talking about eliminating swirls. On our previous video, we talked about using a pad saver, which you should always use a pad saver when you're using conventional abrasives like uh, EchoStorm and Film Tech. If you haven't seen that video, you got to go check that video out too. It's very important to know some of that information. But today, uh, Unita has a couple products right here. Sherry is the hand sanding expert. I've learned so much from her while I've been here. And um, here's a product that I haven't seen before. Before. I've run into swirls, it's been a challenge, and I learned now that there's a product how to get rid of swirls. So Sherry, can you talk about um, these products here and give us a little information on how we can use those things with our 3x4 sander? Yeah, Chris, these are both non-woven pads. They have hook and loop backing. Um, they only work on swirls in the 3x4 size. So don't do it with a 5-inch random orbital because you're going to cause more swirls. They do have abrasive grain in them. You've got a 320 grit aluminum oxide and you've got a 600 grit silicon carbide. The only reason I use the 320 grit is if I've got a someone that has really swirled something up with a five inch and we've got some major pigtails going on. I need something a little bit more aggressive, right? So then we'll use the maroon. Day to day, I use the gray. This is where if someone has used the three by four in the center panel and it's caught and it's swirled up a little bit, we can actually use the gray over it on the raw wood and it'll eliminate it, mask the swirls. So it really knocks the tops off of them so that you don't see them in stain. Right. right. That's interesting. So now I've learned something completely new because I know there was one cabinet job I ran into and I think I know now why I got the swirls because I wasn't using a pad saver to begin with. I was using just um, sponges to sand in between coat or I, I think I might have even used film tech which was causing me to get some walking and get some swirls and I was trying to eliminate the swirls with sponges like super fine sponges but that's probably not the best thing to do, right? No, and, and another thing, that, another big reason why you would get swirls with foam would be using the wrong thickness or the wrong density of uh, sponge. The half inch sponge has been uh, sold from the very beginning. It was really the first one that came out in the US, right? And so it was sold at, at trade shows. And the neat thing was, is that you would see it on the sander and you'd see it on profiles. So everybody got all excited because you could get into the profiles and the flutes on the profiles, right? right? And so everybody was all excited about it and they bought it and they bought the kit and they got the half inch out and they immediately went to sand and they would sand it on flats. And what ends up happening when we sand on flats with the half inch is that this abrasive grain recedes into the sponge. Right. So you're having, you're, you have the weight of the sander on that sponge and as you're sanding, again, direct drive system, it's spinning and it's causing it to catch and twist. And that's gonna cause you swirl marks and cause you a lot of problems. So it's kind of like fighting myself using the wrong abrasive right. for the wrong thing. So um, so this is really good information to know. So we now have these, um, are they called woven or non-woven? Non-woven, non-woven. So, which is really interesting to me because I look at that and I see it's like a woven material, but what is the non-woven actually referencing? It's nylon fibers, and if you've ever seen it made, um, you would understand it's it it starts super thick, right. right? And they depending on how the the fibers are laying, they'll spray grain and then they'll spray their resins, and then it goes through a bed and it's got millions of needles, and it just needles it down into each other. So there's nothing actually tying any of this together. It's ah. just very separate. So all of this okay. just kind of, kind of, you know, you'll start to see it fray after usage right. for a while, but that's due to not having anything tying right. it together. It's just needled down inside itself. So that's pretty cool, interesting, um, you know, fact or information about that that I didn't know. So um, we talked about the importance of the pad saver that we should be using that with conventional abrasives. Now, if I'm using that non-woven, non-woven, did I say that right? Non-woven, non-woven pad to eliminate swirls, do I use the pad saver? No, the only time we use a pad saver is with con what we call conventional abrasives. That's, you know, sanding discs or sanding pads such as these, either be film or paper sheets. Okay. So that's some good information. Now, um, we've talked about you know how to get uh, rid of swirls using these non-woven pads. And I guess um, another thing that 
you know, just came up to me, you know, because I noticed, you know, there's holes in all these things for vacuuming and um, in, in all the abrasives that we see right here. When I'm using the um, non-woven pad, is it going to be vacuuming or am yes. I going to be creating dust? So it's going to be vacuuming no, right through it's gonna that. It's going to vacuum right through here. Okay. It's, it's pretty um, open, open, and so it, it pulls through. Right. We do uh, uh, punch holes in this if you need it. If right. you see that you, you are generating too much dust, we do have these available with holes. I don't run the holes just simply because I feel like I get enough suction with it. Right. Perfect, that's some great information right there. So you, there also is um, what we call an interface pad, and we're gonna be talking about the interface pad also in our next upcoming video. So this also serves a purpose. Uh, you know, a lot of these things come in the kit. So we can see that you know there is a kit that Onita has created that has a wide variety of abrasives and some uh, devices like this, a pad saver, an interface pad. There's a reason you should be using all these. There's a reason why they came in the kit and it's important to learn this so you can have success creating that ultra fine factory-like finish on your cabinet. So stay tuned for our next video, what the interface pad is all about. Wow.